So thanks everyone for coming out on a really cold night. What better way to spend a cold Minnesota winter night than here at the library? I am Lois Langer Thompson. I'm the library director for all 41 of Hennepin County Libraries. But I live here in the neighborhood. This is my uh, li neighborhood library, so I'm glad to be here talking about what we're gonna do. I'd like to just really quickly have the team from Hennepin County each introduce themselves and what they do. So we won't probably catch that on, the, on your mic, but. Anne, do you want to start? And I think Mike Sable, the facility services director, is also going to join us, but he might be a little bit later. So just one other quick note, the restrooms are just straight out that door and straight across the lobby. And I'm going to turn it over to Bill Neuendorf from the City of Edina. Great, thank you. I'm going to try to just go one-handed here. Uh, again, thank you and uh, welcome. Thanks for coming this evening. Uh, I see some familiar faces that we saw the last couple months. Um, Tonight's meeting is a little bit different. We've structured, structured it as a workshop. Um, so uh, we've we'll be encouraging the tables to be working together. So um, as after we give a presentation, feel free to stand up and move around. If you're sitting at a table by yourself or with just one or two people, feel free to snuggle up to your neighbors and uh, we'll work together a little bit later. Um, but this is, this is the second phase of our preliminary redevelopment planning for this site. Um, uh, last year, the, uh, the Hennepin County approached the city of Edina to ask for our help in doing some of this preliminary visioning. The county knows that, that they want to rebuild the library at this property. They also know that they probably don't need as much land as they have here today. Uh, right now, most of this property, almost 60% of it, is dominated by a large surface parking lot. Um, so as the county imagines what they will do with the property, they're, in, they're envisioning a mixed-use site something that would have a library as kind of the focal point, the centerpiece, but there's room for other things. So the last couple months we've been asking folks, what are some of those other things? What would you like to see? What wouldn't you like to see? How could we improve things in the general area? Um, so after a, uh, a couple months of collecting ideas and suggestions, uh, we've been working with the, the professionals at HGA Architects to start taking some of those ideas and giving it, giving it some shape. So the thrust of the work tonight, because we're putting you all to work, um, uh, is to look at some of the preliminary sketches that we prepared. We've got three different sketches so far, um, and to mark them up. You'll have uh, markers at your tables, and we've got plenty more. Uh, we've got post-it notes. Um, so these are three initial concepts. Um, each of them have certain things that are different and some things that are similar. The two similarities are that they all have a major library. The second thing is that they all have different types of mixed uses. Um, some are big, some are small, some are C-shaped, some are L-shaped, and so that we're really looking to see what you guys like and what your preferences are. Um, eventually where this is all going to go is to a request for proposal to the real estate community. Um, as some folks have mentioned, uh, both people at Hennepin County and, and at the city have been uh, receiving phone calls from developers for months about the opportunity to rebuild something here. Uh, and we've politely asked them to kind of go on hold because we wanted to reach out to the community first, um, seeing that this is a, a publicly owned site by the county. Um, eventually, as this site changes in the next three to five years, uh, it will have to be rezoned. There'll be, pu there'll be public hearings, planning commission meetings, additional neighborhood meetings. Uh, we've heard loud and clear that the library is a really important, vital component of this whole area. So separately, the library group uh, at the county will be having additional meetings to talk about specifically what does that library piece look like? Um, so uh, those, are, those will be forthcoming as well, and there'll be a schedule of, of events coming up. Um, I'm not exactly sure when, but in the next month or so? Yeah, early, March. early March, we should have that out. Um, so when we eventually go out to the real estate community, we want to give them some parameters, things that we we, the community, get excited about things that we um, just don't find acceptable here. 
Um, so that, that's where all your input is going. Um, I had mentioned these three sketches tonight. These are just very preliminary sketches. Um, we are planning to come back in about a month uh, on February 9th to show you the changes that we've made based on your input. We'll also be doing some other focus group conversations over the next month. Um, I was checking in, in with the uh, staff at the Hennepin County. It is their site, so they, they're providing a lot of direction as well. Um, but that, that's kind of the pro how the process will, will work. Uh, and the one other thing I guess I would add to that is to ask for your patience, because I mentioned this is three to five years away. So if we come up with the most brilliant idea tonight, it still has to move through the process of planning review and real estate decisions and all those types of things. So there isn't a quick outcome to this. Um, but by going on a, on a structured path, we think that we can find a, uh, an outcome that's really exciting to the library and to the neighborhood and to the broader community. So with that in mind, let me turn it over to Victor. Uh, and he's gonna walk us through some of the information we've received to date. And then when he's finished, um, we'll open it back up for some quick question and answers. And then we'll start working, putting you, putting you all to work in the small groups. Victor? I only need one of the microphones. You do. Uh, how many of you all out there have been with us before at one of our public open houses? Okay, just a few, about a quarter of you. So some of you have not grown to love um, the image, the projector up here. So if you get vertigo from the, sorry about that. Some of us have been coming here for a while, have gotten used to it. Um, I want to introduce one more person, my colleague Maya Blanchett, all the way in the back there. Um, some of us will be kind of roving around to help assist the small group discussion, including Maya. So I want to introduce her as well. Um, this evening, we're building upon the uh, public participation process, uh, the things that we heard from you all before. So you're going to see us try and summarize. I'll say uh, we've got about 40 pages of notes from some of the input we've gotten from this group in two open houses. We're going to try and summarize those for you tonight um, in a fairly brief way. Um, and then we're going to present some initial site concepts that hopefully will respond to some of those um, ideas and questions you all had and then facilitate some small group discussion uh, about those concepts. This slide is what Bill was speaking to, showing that sort of multi-year step-by-step vision that represents the future of the Southdale Library site. Um, some of you were here for step one. Uh, we had a couple of um, public visioning sessions. Tonight, we're on step two um, to help begin to shape the project vision. One thing to add to what Bill said um, is the results of one, numbers one and two, the public input and shaping the vision, will be in drawing form given to interested developers as the, as the representation of the community's preferences and desires and guidelines for a development projects. So it really is a meaningful process that will pro provide the parentheses for developers to move forward on the project. As Bill mentioned, um, there are a few guiding principles around the site um, to make the project a success. Um, a few um, givens, if you will. Number one, this site will be the home of a new Hennepin County Regional Library, Southdale. Um, the second one, in order to optimize and find the highest and best use of this site, there'll also be some mixed-use development um, on the site. And I think you'll see when we show some diagrams, it's a fairly substantial site at about um, eight acres. Um, so that would be about four city blocks. Just one quick question. So I see people copiously writing some of this stuff down. Is this going to be available for people to get later for presentation? Yes, um, great question. And each time we meet, the presentations are uploaded. I know for certain on the City of Edina website, um, as well as Hennepin County, City of Edina, Hennepin County website, they're always posted. I believe, Bill, you said by Friday of this week, this will be posted onto the website. So it'll be available after tonight. Thank you for asking. 
you'll see in the options that a new library could be built two ways. There's plenty of room on the site that it could continue to be a standalone building like it is now with its own grounds. Um, it doesn't share a wall with anything else. That's something you'll see in, in some of the options, actually two out of the three. The other possibility is the library could be connected or integrated with other uses on the site. And those of you who have been with us before, recall that we asked for your input on a number of other shared uses on the site. Everything from retail to housing to office to hotel to healthcare. Um, so those are the many options that we've gotten some feedback from you on. Shared parking. As Bill mentioned, um, the site currently is a building on stilts over a, a very large surface parking lot. Um, all three of the options that you will see attempt to invert that paradigm and provide substantial community space, public space, green space on the site while still accommodating all the parking needed for the site. Engage York and Xerxes. The site here tends to be a little one-sided. It tends to favor its face towards York. One of the things you'll see in the options we've tried to develop is to make the site accessible from all directions, also connecting to what is a really remarkable um, trail and pedestrian path system in the neighborhood. Just a couple of tidbits about the site. Um, these are the basic dimensions. It's about 550 feet by 618, so seven and three quarter acres. Um, some of you have seen these before, some comparables. The image in the center is the site directly north of us that has the Walgreens and the CVS and a retail mall and housing. Um, a couple more parcels here. The one at an angle in the middle is the sort of Trader Joe's block, part of Excelsior and Grand. The one um, to your right is a block in Richfield, just north of 66, with LA Fitness office and some retail. So these are sites of comparable size. So of all the input we got in the two sessions, we tried to, we made ourselves compile into what we call the top 10 list. Um, so there's a lot more um, detailed input that's been recorded, but if we had to boil it down into the 10 things we heard most strongly, the library is a prized asset of the neighborhood for Richfield, for Edina, for North Bloomington, for South Minneapolis. We heard a lot of input of providing better access and connections to the site for cars, for pedestrians, for bikes. We heard a lot of discussion about pedestrian safety. Um, walks too close to busy roads like York, um, too dangerous to cross. Green space on the site uh, was a very prominent theme. We talked about housing a lot, and when housing was discussed, a lot of different input on that. We heard critique of luxury housing, we heard affirmation of housing that would be at an affordable price point or would also be uh, um, oriented towards seniors. We talked about retail. What we heard in the public input process was move away from big box, large franchise, big box retailers, and if there's retail, favor smaller, local, homegrown retail. We talked about restaurant and dining. Um, in particular, some folks noted that there are people that will spend an afternoon or all day here in the library working, doing their work, that actually could benefit from some accessible dining um, options. They're looking for different places around the library to have a quick lunch. So that's something we heard. Number nine is really about giving something back to the community. It's a little related to the green space comment, but it talks about how this can be integrated and something that welcomes the community. It says here through education and community programming, you know, so what does that mean? Um, folks mention things like, can somebody come here and be educated on how to do a tax form? Um, could somebody come here and learn how to use a computer? Get some extra job training? That's just a smattering of the kind of input that we heard. And then site sensitive parking, which sort of speaks for itself. This diagram um, shows the network of trails, parks that are really very close to the site. 
Um, you see the big green at the lower um, right-hand corner there is Adams Hill Park in Ridgefield, which connects to the Nine Mile Creek Trail. Then just at the very bottom of the slide, right up, you're seeing the northern tip of the Centennial Lakes amenity that goes south from there. Um, this is the northbound trail that then serves um, the Galleria and Southdale beyond, and here's the disconnect. So what you're going to see in some of the options, um, there's a 30-foot narrow parcel here um, that's owned by the city of Edina that could very well become a green link from the Southdale Library site um, to Adams Hill Park. Then we've drawn this arrow saying this project has the opportunity to make that connection in a whole bunch of different ways. So that's really been an urban design goal. So I'm going to provide you all an overview of three options. Notice this clause at the bottom is initial concept sketch for discussion only. The reason it says that is um, nothing is being designed for the site right now. These are concepts that um, based on the consensus that we all could reach together will be passed on to potential development entities for the site. So you're really defining the parameters for the project. We're not really designing the project now. That will be one phase in the process. This is really step one. So um, option one features a standalone library at the corner of York and 70th. That's shown in the red here. Each library option assumes a two-story library, by the way. Um, so this would be a, a footprint that would be two stories, maybe a prominent mass on the corner. The blue color are other mixed use programs that we would continue to solicit your input on. This, it looks almost black on this screen, it's a dark, um, it's a dark blue color, is a parking structure. Um, this option suggests a parking structure that would serve the majority of the site that would have two levels underground, four levels above ground, and be wrapped by mixed use development so that it is invisible to the adjacent um, streets. As you know, the site is in a bit of a moat. Um, from all sides around, you descend into the site. That's really a great opportunity um, to make use of that level change. Um, you'll see this better in the three-dimensional drawing, but this suggests you can come in on York drive downward like you do now, but when you get to that low level, you can tuck in to that underground parking in this part of the site, which could come up directly into the library and also is the bottom two levels of that particular structure. We've got that access coming off of Xerxes and off of York in that case. Mixed use here, that could have some um, retail at the lower level that could be accessed off of that central um, area. How much of the property would be sold, do you know? Sold to private development? Um, it's a great question. Uh, unknown right now. Um, when the request for proposals goes to the development community, um, it'll have these parameters with it, and then when responders respond, each one may have a different idea. The county will review and evaluate those to determine the best and highest use of the site. So it's unknown right now. And the parking, is that anticipated to be a, a fee for parking or free? free um, all, it hasn't been decided. It would be typical that in this location it would be at no cost. Is that, yeah, I'm getting some nods, so yeah. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry, um, the question was, will the parking provided on site be at a cost or free? And the plan is to continue to, park it, to offer parking for free. This is a three-dimensional, we'll take a little questions later, let me just uh, get through the options. Um, this is a three-dimensional version of what you just saw. You will give you a few views at your tables, I'll just speak to the plan in one 3D view. Um, this is a much better vantage point. You can see the access off of York um, going down to that lower level, the two-story library, the parking structure with development wrapping it, more mixed-use development on the southern part of the site. What you'll notice on each of these plans 
if you look closely, you can sort of divide them into four quadrants. That's an urban planning principle that's been developed by the Southdale Vision Group um, that we're trying to honor. Um, and it actually, uh, the site would naturally break down into about four city blocks. That's kind of a pattern you're gonna see in each of these um, options. Excuse me. Is that a, a, an entrance off of Xerxes as well? So that's just a, that's a, a vehicle entrance to the area or just to the parking lot off of Xerxes? Is yeah, the story? question was whether there's an entrance to the site off of Xerxes. In option one, the answer is yes. There would be a vehicular entrance off of Xerxes that would also slope down to that lower level and be able to access parking. I'm Not sorry, a, That's a safety issue, um, else. Let's, let's try and hold our comments for the small group discussion. Um, that will be our forum this evening. And I just want to share some of the highlights of the options with you. These are other views of the same option that you'll see uh, at, your, at the tables, will at the drawings will distribute to your tables. Um, option two continues to place the library at the corner of 70th and York. This is the option that integrates the library with associated uses. The blue shows that there will be other mixed use development atop the library. Now, is that a desirable thing or not a desirable thing? What would those uses be? Those are things to, that will be discussed in your small groups at your tables. In this particular option, the parking scenario is different. You don't see a parking structure. Um, you could get one or probably two full levels of parking on this site by just filling in the moat, by just lining it up with the adjacent streets. What this option explores is that the in, entire footprint of the site becomes a platform, if you will, with parking underneath, um, then opening up to the buildings above. So in this case, there's access on York, but it stays level, doesn't drop down, and this is an early concept of some sort of central court that can be a drop-off, that can be a quick in and out for a number of amenities on the site. And then you see more mixed-use development in the southern quadrant um, of the site. There's one site access point that's unique to this option. Right here at this corner. Um, it would be optimal if the site would have easy out access off of um, Hazleton. But the property here to the south um, is not owned by the city. It's not owned by the county. So that would be tentative. Um, but we are showing it as a potential um, if that were to become a possibility. This is a three-dimensional version of the site. When you get the drawings, what you're going to notice is references to things like low-rise and mid-rise. One thing that's similar to each of the options, because of the proximity to residences, in all options you're going to see the term low-rise um, along Xerxes. That will be common to all the options. And then there are mid-rise um, mixed-use buildings that occur either in the center or up against the York part of the, of the site. Um, so that's something that you'll see. And we would love your comments and feedback about things like height, density, placement of these buildings on the site. You'll see views from different angles. Um, when you get the drawings at the table, this happens to be a helicopter view. Um, if you're hovering over the neighborhoods just east of Xerxes. This is sort of hovering over the Westin, looking at it from the Northwest. Okay, third and last option um, before we break. This is the second option with a standalone library. In this case, it explores putting it on the corner of 70th and Xerxes. There's some pros and cons to that. You compromise a little bit of visibility from York in exchange for a quieter corner on the site. So that's one difference. You might come up with others, um, but that's a differentiator that we would love to get some feedback on. We wanted to explore what if the library site is here on the quieter part of the site at 70th and Xerxes. 
That place is a mixed use project on the corner of York and 70th, mixed use to the south. In this case, there's also a parking structure here in the southeast quadrant of the site. In both cases, the parking structure is surrounded by mixed use development. The reason it's thin is you can only what we call single load that. It'll only have daylight to one side with a back side up against the structure. Um, but it's a nice way to hide these kinds of parking structures that serve a development. Again, four stories, um, two stories underground is about our projections of what would meet the parking need for the site. Again, a, some concept of a centralized drop-off. This one shows a small surface lot, perhaps for some quick in and out. Perhaps it could serve um, folks with disabilities, elderly, um, just a little bit of surface parking there. In each option, um, you're seeing a fair amount of green, which is um, intentional. A lot of that would be planted area. Um, some of it may be courtyard-like space that would have pavers or something that would be, um, could be for library programming, um, other courtyard spaces. Also, this dashed line shows the access coming up from below from Adams Hill Park. The concept is to provide multiple safe green ways to get from this corner up to that corner of the site. Unlike the condition today, every sidewalk is a boulevard condition of varying widths, meaning there's always green space between the sidewalk um, and the street. So that's a characteristic you'll see on each option. This gives you the three-dimensional perspective of the option. Um, there is the library at the corner of 70th and Xerxes. Mid-rise mixed-use development at York and 70th and this sort of um, S-shape mixed-use development facing south. Um, and you can see each of these expo explores different kinds of heights. Yes, sir? Um, so on options one and three, we've got the mixed-use Um, I think in some cases we have a step down at the upper level, but um, it would be three or four stories to clad the structure. This is detailed, but parking structure floors are closer together than building floors. Um, some of you may have noticed. So the building surrounding the parking structure would need to be three or four stories to clad the structure. Sorry, the question was whether the structure's lining the parking structure would need to be three or four stories to cloud the structure. So can you define for us um, low rise and mid rise? Yeah, the question was could we provide some description of what we mean by low rise and mid rise. There's somewhat qualitative terms. When we use a term low rise, we're thinking in the range of two to four stories. When we're thinking mid rise, um, that could be in the five to ten story range for mid rise. Um, you know, these are modeled loosely. I think in the tallest structures that you see in these options, nothing would be taller than 10. So the mid-rise would be in the 5 to 10 range, low-rise 2 to 4. Okay, it's... it's just about time for me to stop talking and turn it over to the small group tables here. Each of you have an 11 by 17 card. Each table has a card that has these same questions on it. These are meant to prime discussion at your table. They're not the only questions, but just to get discussion started, these are things, ways to evaluate each of the options. What we're asking each table to do, um, I think we're going to pass out some of the large sheets of the options. You're, you're going to get three sheets at each table. Each sheet is a composite of some of the views that you saw here for the options. So you'll get one sheet per option. Um, you've got some post-its at the table, markers. The drawings are to be scribbled on. Um, you can post notes, you can scribble on the drawings to provide your reaction to these questions that are up on the screen here. 
and on the card or any other observations that you may make. Um, if any of you have one or two people at a table, I see a couple there, um, you may want to join um, a bigger group, um, but it's up to you. We're going to take um, about 30 to 40 minutes for this exercise, so consider spending about 10-15 minutes per option. Each table, we're going to ask you to identify an ambassador for the table. So little did you know that some of you will be doing some public speaking tonight. So we're asking each of you to identify an ambassador for the table that at the end of the small group exercise can stand up and share your results with the bigger group. <laughs> 